Hey guys, this is Scotty with Project 4104. We're currently sitting in the entranceway of my GM PD 4104. It's a 1958 model. Uh, these were produced from 1953 to 1960. There was a little over 5,000 of these things produced, and there's only 700 and some still known to be, uh, you know, roadworthy. I won't say they're on the road, but they are uh, roadworthy. So. 700 and some worldwide, it's a very rare vehicle to find, and I had no idea what I was buying. I just knew it was a cool old bus. Uh, it is solid aluminum body, so that's something that you don't see much at all. So just keep in mind, Ford did not do it first, GM did it back in the 50s. And uh, it really did a, a big number for them. It made the coach lighter, therefore getting a whole lot better fuel mileage out of the Detroit 671 diesel engine in the back of the bus. Uh, they got eight to 10 miles to the gallon. This one does not. Uh, just tell you right now, it does not get eight to 10 miles to the gallon here in West Virginia. Uh, but it, it does pretty good. Uh, but that doesn't sound like a whole lot. Well, you have to compare that to the buses of the time. The gasoline models in the 50s were getting two to four miles to the gallon, uh, which gas was a whole lot cheaper at that time. And your diesel models at the time were getting five to seven miles to the gallon. So. Uh, 8 to 10 is pretty good. This also had a, a really nice cruising speed of uh, 65 mile an hour. So a little bit longer on the interstate to get home, but uh, 65 mile an hour is, is really good. So uh, you can see here it's a four-speed uh, manual transmission, unsynchronized. A little getting used to, but it was, uh, it was fantastic. It did a really good job getting home. Now, this one was a genuine Greyhound. It was purchased by Greyhound in 1958 uh, for the bus stop in Cleveland, Ohio. So it ran all over the United States, but it was stationed in Cleveland, Ohio. They put millions of miles on these buses, serviced them before they sold them, uh, put a service odometer on the rear hub, and mine shows 33,000 miles put on it uh, after Greyhound parted with it. Now, again, I'm going to try to keep this video extremely short um, because I don't know what you guys really want to know. There's a whole lot of interesting facts about these 4104s. This is uh, air ride suspension, the very first air ride suspension ever put on a vehicle. Uh, GM made it, you know, a norm. Uh, up until that point, everything was uh, old school leaf spring shocks, that kind of thing and uh, it has a fantastic ride. I mean, if you look right there, that is a solid steel post, and I did not feel a single bump in the road on the way home. Fantastic ride, um, and all the features in this bus, what we take for granted, doesn't sound like much. Um, it had a bathroom, it had roomier seating, the air ride suspension made it fantastic. Believe it or not, it had air conditioning back in the 50s. There was a, a little one-cylinder pony motor on that side of the bus underneath and an air conditioner right underneath where my, I'm currently sitting. And uh, the pony motor ran the air conditioning unit. So even in the 50s, this thing had AC. Uh, what you experience on modern cars, modern uh, gray, or coaches, uh, if you've taken a Greyhound recently, they're all modeled after the innovations of this bus. So it was a humongous deal for the uh, history of the motor coach. So uh, I can do another video with more intricate details when I actually have a script because this is just all that I remember that I've learned. I've been sitting down just about every day and trying to learn more and more and more about these vehicles. They are fantastic. I have fell in love with this bus. I fell in love with the community that uh, is obsessed with these buses. And, uh, you know, it, it's something different. You don't see it very often. So um, we'll give you a quick tour. Uh, again, I've done gutted it, but it's uh, it's not looking terrible. Mind the mess, it's still a work in progress. So uh, without any uh, delay, let's take a quick tour. All right, guys, so we're gonna start our tour outside. Uh, this is the front of the bus, obviously. Uh, the 4104 had the single headlights, whereas the predecessor, the 4106, had dual headlights uh, and a more squared off top. Uh, you can tell I haven't videoed much because I miscalculated where my finger would go. Uh, this is 
the uh, only piece of steel right here on the entire tire outside of the bus. This is blue, blue strip down through here. The rest of this is aluminum. Again, you can see how low it's sitting because the airbags have not been pumped up. Uh, this right here was the bay that the pony motor sat in to run the air conditioning. Uh, it uh, will be housing a, uh, oh, what is it, an Emerald 3 Onan generator uh, that came with the bus, and it, believe it or not, it did run. Uh, you have your cargo bays. I'm not opening that because it is plumb full of junk that we've pulled out and kept. Um, but, you know, two cargo bays, plenty of room, battery access compartment. It takes two very large batteries to run this sucker. Oh, emergency escape door. It does work. Uh, that is uh, ventilation for the radiator. No, that is not the original light. Uh, we could, all these lights back here were non-operational when, uh, I purchased the bus. I uh, bought some LEDs to put there, and we couldn't ever figure out why they wouldn't work. I mean, I took them with us. They didn't work. Well, it turns out the electrical is all backwards on these things. It's a, uh, uh, what they call a positive ground system. And I had never in my life seen anything like it, but everything runs backwards than what I'm used to. So we will be doing some electrical work here soon. Oh, pardon the video. And pardon the wire mess, because that's me testing everything. Again, uh, it'll get all cleaned up. It was not quite this bad before I got a hold of it. That is the uh, Detroit Diesel 671. Uh, with the manual transmission to the right-hand side of it. Um, and it runs like a top when it has fuel in it. Uh, we will be uh, remedying the fuel issue here very soon. Oh. You don't realize how heavy those bay doors are. Oh, and this side is, you know, not a whole lot different. This one panel is different. It is an electrical panel, which you can see is a bit on the messy side. So that's going to need a, a good going over. So, oops, like I said, it is going to take some, uh, we are gonna be doing some electrical work on this bus. Um, same bay doors to go all the way through pardon the mess as i said we've been demoing uh it's not mess that's art all right so this is what the entrance looks like steps are in fairly decent shape uh i won't say great but decent uh heater core was leaking so we pulled that panel off again four speed transmission Mind my mess, because we are just working. We're not worried about driving. Oh, the only gauge here that actually works is the air pressure. But you can see all toggle switches and everything ready to go. We have the destination light, which has made a great cup holder for us. And a speaker holder. You can tell someone was a Mountaineer fan. And that was the driver's air conditioning. And then we have the bus. Some 1930s theater seats that uh, I acquired from a good friend. And then 35 foot, well, more 30 foot interior uh, throughout the bus. Where that broom is sitting, it was the bathroom. Uh, it was extremely tiny. Uh, it, uh, pretty much the wall was right there. So you can see how tiny the bathroom actually was. And it was a two by four stud wall. So it come over quite a ways. Uh, sink was in that location. Uh, believe originally that was where the toilet was, but I don't know that for a fact. Uh, I'd had to do some more digging and find some more pictures. 
The back glass is unfortunately busted, but uh, we're going to cover over that and not worry too much about it. And then we're back to the emergency door. And like I said, it does, does work. Thank God. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, the kitchen area was here the way uh, he had it set up. You can see that was the hookups for the sink, uh, the water lines. There was, there it is. Uh, that is propane line for the gas stove that was in here. Uh, again, bathroom. There was a closet over top of the wheel well there. And then there was a triple bunk there. You can actually semi-see the outline of, of where the frames were. Um, but yeah, it, it's a whole lot of bus. Uh, still have a whole lot of work left to do. So that's uh, that's our update again. Pardon the mess. We're, we're working. Uh, next video will probably be of me ripping out all this insulation and sealing up the windows. Uh, there's quite a bit, quite a bit of work still to be done. We've got insulation, you know, up here that's got to be replaced. Uh, these panels, there's a few busted, they've got to be replaced. The AC units don't work, so they're going to have to be replaced. Uh, so quite a bit of work left to do, but it's coming along. So, uh, you know, we'll sit back down and and we'll tell you a little bit more about uh, about what's actually going on with Project 4104. All right, now that you've seen the uh, Project 4104, I want to tell you this was already converted into an RV. I, I mentioned that during the tour, but it was already an RV. Uh, the gentleman prior took care of it. He did a really good job for the time frame, uh, but we are not turning it into an RV. Anybody that knows me knows that I don't do anything conventional. So uh, I'm not going to tell you what we're doing with it. You have to stick around to find out, but uh, you'll find out in due time. Uh, I promise you that. Uh, I'm, again, sorry this video is uh, not real exciting, but this video series is going to follow the remainder of the project. Uh, we did not really think there would be that many people interested in watching me and my wife and my kids tear this thing apart. So uh, we're already a little ways through the project but uh, you didn't miss anything major. The bus is still here, and the fun part of the project is only just beginning. So if you enjoyed the video, again, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and if you have ideas for future videos, make sure you leave those down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.